Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Chris with me. Hey y'all. And today we're going to be talking about the asteroid impact or the meteorite that's supposed to hit the Earth. Uh -huh. That creates the day of the Lord. Yeah. And we're going to talk specifically about how America, or I should say the Americas, is the promised land. Really? Yeah, we get this question a lot. We've answered it a few times. Um, but this time we're going to just give a little bit more information, a few more scriptures to support, you know, how this could actually be. Okay. But first thing we want to do is come over to the book of Genesis chapter 15 to hear about this so-called promised land. Mm -hmm. This is, this is Abram, even before his name was turned to Abraham, getting this word from the Lord. Yeah. If you would read verse 13. And he said unto Abram. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Okay, now this right here, we've done plenty of classes on the details on on this, you know, this four hundred years. Right. We understand that this is coming to an end here in America. Right. Um, we understand that this is what he says, ser serving them. This is the slavery that these people will be under. Yeah. Um, but notice how it says there will be a stranger in the land. Mm -hmm. That's important to understand because these people walked all over the place, right? Yeah. Moses, he walked from Egypt to Midian, which was 360 miles. Wow. Yeah. So, so to be a stranger in a foreign land means they was way off somewhere. Yeah. Right. Ain't nobody even heard of their whole family or their race or anything. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, they, they, these people, they travel. Right. Look at verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with a great substance. All right, so we're talking about this promised land. Yeah. So let's talk about this judgment here. So we'll come over here to Zechariah chapter 14. Mm -hmm. You see in verse 1, it's talking about the day of the Lord. Right. Right. So this whole chapter is going to give us a lot of details we can, we can see already. Yeah. Now you look right there at verse 2. It's talking about how he's going to gather the nations and you know all of this stuff we're here in the end times. Right. To gather them against Jerusalem to battle. Yeah, a lot of this you can already see the lead up. Right. And you see right there, he says in verse 3 that he's coming to fight the war. Mm -hmm. Right? But then you look right there in verse 4, you see how he comes to fight. He, he really doesn't play really fair. <laughs> look, look at verse 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove towards the north, and half of it towards the south. This is that rock that Daniel was talking about, right? Right. Um, which coming down to Mount Olives uh, or Mount Olivet, which is the same mountain that the Messiah went up, mm -hmm. and he was, and he told us that he was coming back to that same mountain. And this is his return. Yeah, it's not really a soft landing like it was a takeoff, <laughs> right? So because we see right here that he's going to turn this mountain into a valley. Yeah, they strike it down the middle and rip one half to the north and one to the south. Absolutely. This right here sounds like a meteorite. Yeah. A huge asteroid that's going to hit our planet. They say that orbital bombardment is the um, the ultimate weapon. Against, against man and his materialism? Yeah. Yeah, well, this one is going to crush or destroy all of the economic systems of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, let's show you why. You say, well, this is just a rock or a stone on his feet landing on Mount Olivet. Okay. Right? But let's go over and let's look at some things over in the book of Revelation. You see right here in uh, Revelation chapter 8, when it says that the first angel sounded. Mm -hmm. and you see right there, it said a third part of the trees were burnt up. Yeah. And then down in verse 8, it says a third part of the seas became blood. Mm-hmm. And in verse 9, a third part of the creatures which in the sea died. Even a third part of the ships were destroyed. So what this is telling us is that one third, this impact is going to affect one third of the earth. Yeah. So I went to the web and I pulled down this map here. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Now, this is the map that people who study the flat Earth use a lot. Yeah. Right? Because it shows kind of the polar observation of the Earth. Yeah. Showing all of the continents at one time. Well, I pulled this down so that we could see all of the continents at one time. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I created a smaller version of it that's just one third of the bigger version. Okay. Just to see what a one third impact would look like. Yeah. Now, this is Jerusalem right in here. If we take this bullseye and put it right on top of Mount Olivet, you see how much of the earth is destroyed by this impact. Mm-hmm. So if that much of the planet is destroyed by this impact, that's going to completely ruin the economies of yeah. the world. You're not going to recover. We're not going to recover from this. But hold on, we're not finished yet because we have other verses to look at. Like for instance, this one over here in Ezekiel chapter 38, which says that this event will cause every wall on the planet to fall. Every building will fall when this event happens. Mm-hmm. So there goes your economy. Yeah, because now you ain't got your banks or your stores or your capital buildings or... All of the people we depend on to supply us with our stuff are now trying to get help from somebody else. Then you got the people that are working for those people. Now, they're not going to come to work if they don't have a house to come back to. Absolutely. Now, let's go over to the third testament of the Bible. Let me show you something over there. This is down here in chapter 55 of the Third Testament of the Bible. If you would, Chris, go ahead and read verse 69. Three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear, and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survive the chaos. So if you have this earth impact that's that big, Mm -hmm. does that look like three quarters of the earth has gone away? All of Russia is gone, all of China is gone, all of Africa is gone. But you ain't got to take my word for it. I actually did some math on this. And I came in and I pulled up some data. This is the square footage of each of the continents. Mm -hmm. And when you look, understanding that none of Asia will survive, 0% of Asia will survive, 0% of Africa is to survive. A small portion of North America, like parts of Canada, if you look at the picture, mm-hmm. it kind of reaches into Canada and parts of America. Yeah, Northern America and Canada. These are the biggest continents. If you come in and you continue down looking, okay, Europe is gone, 0% of it survives. Antarctica is like is not touched. Right. Uh, parts of South South America is not touched, and only part of North America is touched. Australia is left alone. They, it doesn't reach over there. So now I did this really quickly, you know, just playing around with some numbers to see, you know, how this three quarters of the planet would be going away. Yeah. So from our map that we see with the impact zone being on Mount Olivet, covering one third of the Earth. I came over for about 34%. Mm-hmm. But that's just a rough estimate. Right. Right? Because, you know, all I did is put an Earth impact about a third of the planet right there in the middle of Mount Olivet, showing that America, the continent of South America, and Australia are pretty much the only places that survive. Maybe Japan and those islands out there. Yeah, but that's a lot. Right. Don't. And then I went a little further and started looking at the populations. Because you remember said it said one third of humanity would go away. Mm-hmm. One third of the men, one third of the trees, blah, blah, blah. And so what I put in here, doing similar, I came up with 37% being destroyed simply by destroying Africa, Asia, and Europe. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit high. We were expecting it to be 33, but like I said, this is a rough estimate. Right. But it's amazing that when you drop a rock that destroys those three continents, almost exactly one third of humanity is destroyed. Yeah, and some stray rocks might clean up the rest of that. So this is what Revelation is telling us. Mm -hmm. We have a meteorite that's coming. It's going to land on Mount Olivet, and it's going to destroy the economic systems and a large part of the rest of the world. Matter of fact, let's come back over to the Third Testament and finish reading what it says there. Look at verse 70. Do not be confused, because before the closing of the sixth seal, great things shall happen. Now slow up right there. 
because I did a video not too long ago showing that there's actually two earthquakes in the book of Revelation. One you read about in uh, chapter 6. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another earthquake that you read about over in chapter 11 or something like that. Okay. Those would seem to be two separate earthquakes. And that's what he's telling us here when he said, do not be confused. Right. Because you don't think that the earthquakes come early. Or when you see the first initial earthquake, you think that that was the big one. Yeah. That's not the big one. The big one is in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. the, the one in chapter 6 is more like just a wake up call with people running around and hiding in rocks and stuff. That's what yeah. lets them know that the day of the Lord is coming. Yeah. But go ahead and read it. Do not be confused because before the closing of the sixth seal, great things shall happen. The heavenly bodies shall show great signs. The nations of the earth shall lament. And of this planet, three quarters shall disappear, and one quarter only will remain, in which the seed of the Holy Spirit shall grow as new life. This is the promised land. So when you're looking over here, and I, I know I'm just doing this roughly, something I just put together is, but there's your promised lands over here. Does it include Australia? Definitely South America mm -hmm. and parts of North America, including Mexico. Yeah. Which is where the third testament of the Bible was written. Right. Look at verse 71. Humanity will begin a new existence united by one single doctrine, one single language, and one single bond of peace and brotherhood. So we know this language to be spirituality. Right. But, you know, we could be a little bit facetious and have a debate on whether this language is going to be English or Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think they speak English in Australia, so. Yeah, but they speak Spanish in Mexico and. Yeah, so it, it, I don't know. I kind of hope it's English. You don't have to learn a whole new language. Yeah, well, we do have to learn the language of spirituality, and that is the true language. Right. So, guys, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, if you want to pick this ball up and run with it uh please give please share your video or whatever you come up with out of it i'd be interested to know if somebody actually spent a little bit more time on the math on this and you know figuring out what this is going to be but i definitely believe this is what we're talking about mm -hmm. a meteor that's going to destroy the planet right and that's what we have to say about it mm -hmm. so if you would down in the comments section let us know what you have to say about it we'd like to hear your thoughts on the subject and with that, we're going to say peace and safety unto your home. And shalom.